Welcome to our lecture on section views. In this lecture, we are going to be uh, looking, why, looking at the reason why we need to use section views in engineering drawings, and then also the characteristics of section views, um, the different types of section views we'll be encountering or we'll be needing to use, and the comparisons between some types of section views. Okay, so section views show interior detail that is too complicated to be um, either shown clearly or too complicated to be dimensioned by the traditional orthographic views and hidden lines. Okay, so section views also show how an object will look if a cutting plane, by a cutting plane, I mean if you should consider using a saw to cut through the object and then the material in front of a cutting plane was discarded. So you do the cutting and then whatever object is between you and then the um, and then the object. So let's say you have an object. We have we have an object like this. Oops. You have an object like this. Okay. All right. And then you. So I call this a saw. And then you cut through the object. Okay. Um, let me change the color of the, what is showing the cutting. So you are cutting through the object along this plane. But when you cut, all right. So when you do when you do the cutting, you the you the one who's doing the cutting is around here. Okay, you have done your cutting. Whatever object is between you and then the original object, we have to throw that object away. Okay, we have to remove that object. By so doing, we are going to be um, left with something like this. So you are only going to have that as a remainder. Okay, so all this part, so all this part, See all these parts is gone. Okay, so we have um oops. so we have only something like this. Um I'm going to have only that. Um, okay, so whatever is left, I think it's complete now. So you are going to have only this left. Okay, we'll be seeing in more example. So I did, but I just wanted to show the, the aspect of us drawing. Um, whatever part is between us and the original object away, so that the view that is left, whatever is left, is actually um, our sectioned object, or what we see becomes a section view. Okay. Okay. So on this slide, we can see um, a very complicated. Um, drawing showing different parts, okay? So I, I, I brought this to explain how very complicated some, some drawings can be, and then why you may need section views, section views in parts, some parts of the drawing. Okay, so this is another drawing of a, a, a complex um, machine. Um, it's actually a, a, the tailstock of a milling machine. 
Okay, so this is the assembly drawing. This is the assembly drawing. Um, this is the assembled, assembled part. Okay, so we can we can we can see here that not all details are easy to be seen directly in the drawing. Okay. So you need to section some parts. For example, part um, part one, which we are calling the body. Okay, so this is. Oh, this is part one. Let's take a close look. Then when you come here, the section, the act of sectioning the part one gives a bit more detail to the, um, that particular part. Okay, that's section part one. And then we can also look at some other parts like part seven, part seven, which is the nuts. Then we also have part four, which is the, the screw. Okay, now the sectioning of part one, which is the body, exposes exposes the, um, the a, a better view of parts four and part six and seven. Okay, so without sectioning, without the section that has been done, without the section that has been done on uh, this assembly, we will not be able to see the length of this part, this part over here, which is essentially part, um, part four, okay? And then other parts such as part six, part six is a washer, and then other parts like, um, another part like part, okay, part seven is visible anyway. This is part seven shown here, part seven is a nut, okay? But so without the section, you will not be able to see parts one, um, sorry, part six and part six and um, the other parts which are being exposed over here. Okay, so let's quickly look at some characteristics of section views. Okay, what characterizes section views? Now, first of all, features that appear in hidden details in the orthographic view mostly are displayed as solid lines. So what this is saying is that in um, section views, we cannot have hidden details, except for um, very rare cases, okay? So the drawing, the drawing we are seeing here has some hidden, hidden details, okay? But also the um, um, section lines are also indicated, section lines. So we have section line, section AA and then section BB, okay? So after the section at A, A, and B, B is applied, what we have, what we have does not show any hidden, any hidden lines as was originally shown in the, in the, um, let's say in the side view. So in the side view, the side view is showing hidden details. But when you come to the, the front view, the front view over here, and then the top view, we do not have any hidden details showing. Quickly, as a way of revision so far, looking at section, we are considering section AA. You, the observer, let's see, you, the observer, okay, you, the observer, you are standing here, and then let's say you use, um, let's say you use a, a, a saw, a saw to cut along line AA, okay. So you are cutting, we have a, you are cut, let me say you are cutting along this plane. You're cutting along a plane like this. Okay. So your knife is going to move along this plane. Um, just trying to draw my plane. Okay, so there's a plane. So you are cutting, you are the observer is here, you are cutting, you are cutting through this hole and through this web, okay, all the way down. All the way down. Okay. So the plane I've drawn in green is what we are calling the cutting plane. Um, oops.
um, let me just okay so this plane in green is what it calling the cutting plane. Now, youth observer, you are here, you are cutting along this plane, whatever is between you, youth observer over here, the cutting plane, we are going to throw away. We are going to throw away. So it means you are going to, um, all these, you are going to throw them, throw it away. Okay. You have to imagine the, this in 3D, okay? All this you are going to throw away. Okay. Now, after you had done that, done that, you provide a, a section drawing of section AA has been provided over here. Okay. Now we can see our holes clearly. See our holes clearly with no hidden lines showing. Okay. So we can also apply a similar thing. We can also apply a similar thing uh, by taking a section using section line BB, all right? And this is what we have. So in, in that case, you are viewing from the top. In that case, you'll be viewing from the top. You're viewing from the top, okay? And you are going to cut along section line. Okay, you follow section line BB, it gives you a section plane. Okay, so you are going to do your cutting. You the observer is here, you throw whatever is between you and the cutting plane away. Okay, so that is going to leave us with this object over here, this drawing over here. Okay. So features, let me, um, as a way of recap, number one, first characteristic, features that appear as hidden details in the photographic view mostly are displayed at solid line. So what that means is that no hidden details are shown in the section views. Okay. Number three, in, in drawing, the exposed cuts or surfaces are identified by section lining or what we call cross hatching, section lining or cross hatching. These are essentially parallel lines inclined at 40 degrees I accepted for general use. Okay, so my section has been done. This part is thrown away and this is what we have. Okay, now so these parallel lines inclined at 40 degrees show that sectioning has been done on the surface. Okay, so we now, for a second view can sometimes replace one of the regular views. For example, regular view as shown is shown in this this first drawing. So this is a regular view. Okay. So um, this at the top is showing um, let's say a, a front view. Okay, with a section line showing how the cutting will be done. All right, so the cutting is done. We threw this, the cutting is done and we threw all these parts away. So we threw all these parts away and this is what we have less, less. This is what we have less. So what they are saying is that this drawing over here, this drawing, this drawing is, Hello. is replacing the top view, which we should have. So our section view, our section view is essentially replacing what would have had um, as the, the, the front view. So our front view is actually now a section view. Okay. Now in the, in the second drawing or assembly of a milling machine, you have uh, um, the end view, end view of a milling mas machine, or the side view, we call it the side view. And then here we have the front view. Okay, so 
instead of a, instead of a, um, a front view that is not sectioned, we are having a sectioned front view. Okay, so again, we can see that the, um, what we have here, the stop view um, was actually replaced by a, is, uh, is, what is a section. So the stop view is actually a section top view. And then this front view is actually a, a sectioned front view. So, sectioned front view. This one is a sectioned top view. Okay. Cutting planes. So a cutting plane, a cutting plane, which is also characterized by a line, indicates where the imaginary cutting is taking place. Okay. Now in the drawing, in this drawing, our, our cutting plane, our cutting plane is the golden line or the line which is um, brown. All right, now in this, these other drawings, the blue line, sorry, the, the blue plane is what we are calling our cutting plane. The blue plane is our cutting plane. Okay, so the cutting plane shown over here, right? The, these, the position of the cutting plane, second point, the position of the cutting plane is indicated when necessary on a view of the object or assembly by a cutting plane line. Okay, so what that means is that we can have cutting planes, but we have cutting planes, but cutting planes are shown in three dimensional drawings. Cutting planes are shown in three-dimensional drawings. If you want to indicate a cutting plane in a two-dimensional drawing, for example, any of the views, any of your views of your orthographic drawing, you will show that by what you call a, a cutting plane line, okay? So let's, let's quickly go back. These drawings are two-dimensional drawings. These drawings are two-dimensional drawings. So AA, AA is our cutting plane plane line. BB is also a cutting plane line. This is another drawing showing a cutting plane. Um, cutting plane is marked by the green boundary, this green line. The cutting plane is marked by, um, by the green line. All right. So after the cutting is done, or after sectioning is done, what is left is the parts of the object Painted uh, bright blue. Okay, this also show cutting planes and cutting plane lines. So here, this is the cutting plane, and this is the cutting plane line, the arrow, arrow AA. Again, that repeats the arrows, the direction of the arrows show the direction of view. Okay. So this is telling us that simply the observer is here. The observer is standing here okay, and is viewing this direction. How are cutting plane lines indicated? Um, so I think this is how cutting plane lines are shown. Um, you can have it this way, okay, where you have your arrows and your long lines, okay, interspersed with two short lines. Two short lines. Okay. Alternatively, we can also have a cutting plane line shown like this. All right. The ends of the cutting plane line are bent at 90 degrees. That's so either in um, orthographic views or in pictorial views. When a cutting plane line is shown, the ends are bent, bent at 90 degrees. All right, and at the end of that bend, there are 
arrowheads to indicate the direction of sight. I mentioned that already. The cutting plates are not shown on sectional views. Okay, so on the pictorial view, you may have cutting planes shown. shown. Um, but on the sectional view, cutting planes are not shown. Um, also, the cutting plane line may be omitted when it corresponds to the center line of a part or when only one sectional view appears on the drawing. Okay. Um, I just want to show you a quick one. So the part we have here, part we have here, um, has a section line A corresponding with a center line. The same applies for section line BB. Corresponding, it corresponds to the center line of these two holes. Section views, last point, section views, um, sectional view subtitles are given when identification letters are used and appear directly below the view. Incorporating this, the letters at each end of the cutting plane. Okay. So you have a cutting plane, you have a cutting plane. Let me use the better one. So you have your cutting plane shown in blue. Okay. Um, these are the lines bent at 90 degrees. At the end of the lines, there's an arrow showing direction of view. Okay. So typically, um, there will be letters shown at the end. Okay. As a way of naming the section or the section plane. So here we have AA. Okay. Alternatively, instead of having section AA, you can also have this. Okay. So now we come to hatching. Or, I mean, what you can also have a section lining. I prefer to call it as hatching. Hatching. Now, hatching indicates the surface that has been cut and makes it stand out clearly. That's the use of hatching. Then, hatch lines, hatch lines um, usually consist of thin parallel lines drawn at approximately 45 degrees. Okay, so this is our, our drawing showing our section line. Okay, so this is a top view. You can call this a top view. In the front view, you are going to have this. Then now it's showing the section lines clearly. All right. Another thing we should know about section line. If you are um, if you are um, providing hatching for a part that's inclined like this, it is not good to make your hat lines parallel to one of the sides of the part. So this is the side of the part. Hat lines look parallel to the sides of the part. That is not accepted. You can you should also not have your hash lines being perpendicular to, to one of the sides of the path. This is more accepted. Okay, quickly, types of section views. We have what we call um, first one, what you call a full section. Okay. Now you have a, a so far, all the examples we've been discussing are full sections. Okay, so, so it is used for both detailed and assembly drawings. That's full sections. When cuts, when the cutting plane divides the object to two identical parts, it's not necessary to indicate its location. All right. Okay, so this is a full. This one is a full section. Okay. Then we have half section. The half sections, they, um, they show one half of the section up to the center line. Okay. And then the other half is, is shown in full view. Other half is shown in full. Remember, a half section shows one fourth of the part, not one half. Okay. Remember, this is very important to remember. A half section only shows. Um, a quarter of the part. Now the quarter, the half, sorry, the half section drawing is not normally used where the dimension of internal diameters is required. Okay. So this is what a, a half section shows. Now we are doing a half section because whatever is here is the same thing that is going to be here. So we will not want to repeat that. Then we also have offset sections. The offset sections are used to include features that are not in a straight line. Straight line, sorry. 
The cutting plane line may be offset or bent so as to include several planes or curved surfaces. Essentially, what we're doing in offset section is that the, take note, the cutting plane line is not, is not straight, okay? The cutting plane line will only go through the objects we are interested in, okay? Okay, so we can see our section plane going through one hole over here, okay? It doesn't continue. It doesn't continue in a straight line, okay. But rather, another plane goes through a hole we are interested in, then another hole we are interested in. But mind you, the direction, the change in directions are not shown on the section drawing. Change in direction is shown only on the section lines or in the section plane. But the section drawings do not do not show the change in directions. The fourth type of section drawing is what you call the broken out section. section. Now, when certain internal and external features on objects can be shown without drawing another view, broken out and partial sections are used. Okay, so then a cutting plane or a line or a break line, what you are calling a break line, is used to indicate where the section is taken. Okay, so we are in this in, in breaking our section, we are interested in only a small section of the of the whole part or of the whole assembly. Then we use what we call breaking our section to show the details of that small part. Okay, in this case, we are we are interested in this hole here, interested in this hole here, and then part of the cylinder is attached to. So we make a broken out section, only that part. Okay, this is how we show them breaking out section. Okay. Okay. Now what they essentially do is that they save your drawing time, so that you 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 not you not have to spend the whole time sectioning sectioning a whole part, you not have to section this whole all this part, but just a small part will be sectioned. Okay. We ha also have what we call aligned sections. Aligned section is, notice that an aligned section is not a true projection of the cut surface. How do we know that? Now, if you are doing a true projection, this edge of the, take this to be our top view. Okay, if you are doing a true projection, this, Okay, and this, this hole that is showing here, showing here would have also been positioned differently. In fact, if you do that, you are going to have something like this for the holes. If you are going to have one hole here, one hole here and another one here. Okay, your center in there, but that is not what is happening. You can see that um, instead of having the extent, the extent of this um, object here being on the blue line, it actually crosses the blue line all the way to this place. So that's why I think a line section is not a true projection of the cut surface. Well, so what is it? It resolves or aligns special part features to clarify them or make them easier to represent in section, okay? So that in, in this case, the cutting plane is, is bent to pass through all the non-aligned features, non-aligned features in the on section view. As you can see, our cut is our cutting plane line. So our section line is bent, is bent. Okay, then we, also have a line section also this is the first example of a line section and another example of an aligned section whole take note whole section line bent so that it can go through all the and some of the holes we are interested in the 
this is another line section. Okay. Instead of having instead of having this, we are saying that would prefer this. Preferring this. This is also another line section. Okay, then we come to revolve sections. Revolve section is made by revolving the cross section view by 90 degrees about an axis of evolution and superimposing, we'll see an example of what this means, and superimposing the section view on the orthographic view. Revolve sections are used for describing a cross section without having to draw another view. Okay, so we can see this is actually, this is actually, um, The drawing here is a cross section of, of this, this part. I mean, this part. So, this part you are seeing here. All right. The section that is produced over here is a cross section of that part and has been turned and placed right on the object. Okay. This is another example of a revolved, a revolved section. So take note, the section, the section has been done. The section has been done, this is a section one. But the, sec the, the actual sectioning is placed right at the position where the section has been done. Section has not been sent into another view. Take note. Um, we have also removed sections. Okay, removed sections are very similar to revolved sections, only that whatever section drawing you have of that part, you locate, you locate it outside of where the cutting is being done or outside of where the section is being done. Okay, so then more often the re re removed section is drawn to an enlarged scale for clarification and easier dimension. All right, okay. To look at it very closely, now this, this drawing over here, if we look at our section line, look at section line, if we make the section drawing over here, or if we draw the section part over here, okay, you would have, you would have given us a, a revolved section. I've given as a, but this is not preferred or is a poor technique because we do not need to apply a revolved section here. Okay. So what we will actually do, or what is preferred, is to remove whatever section you have to a different position. And that is what we have in this second point. We've sent the, the section which should be here to another place on the drawing. That's removed section. Okay. In the second part of my slide over here, we have different sections: section A, section B, section AA, section B, B, section C, C, along the length of different points on the same objects. Okay. And you can see that they are giving you um, different results of different sections. All these are showing, showing um, other examples of removed sections. So there's a special removed section for section AA, section AA over here. There's a special removed section for it. Here it is. There's another removed section for section BB. All right. So you can see that removed sections are preferred when you are we are trying to show different details in the same object, different details in the same object. Okay, we will also apply remove section to this object here, um, a hook. Along the whole hook, there are different, there are different um, sizes or shapes of cross section. 
as you can see, processing BB is, a, is different from processing AA. Okay, and they are placed outside of the outside of the drawing. Okay, think of it. If we should make a revolve section, several revolve section along this hoop, the whole drawing is going to be cumbersome. So we rather prefer a removed section. Okay, which will keep the drawing um, neat and easy to read. Okay, that's the difference between some of the pairs of section. Um, first pair, remove this, evolve section. I think I've uh, explained in the previous slide, but as a way of explanation, um, normally um, remove sections differ from revolve section in that the section is removed to an open area on the drawing instead of being drawn directly on the view. Remove sections are used when there is not enough room on the photographic view for evolved section. Like I, I said in the previous slide, example of the the hook. The removed sections are used to show the contours of complicated shapes, such as um, the wings and the, air, and the fuselage of airplane, and also the blades for jet engines or um, power plants, turbine blades, and other parts that have continuously varying shapes. In other words, continuously varying cross sections. Okay, in closing, so section views help the view, um, help, section views help the view of the, of the inner details of an engineering drawing. Section, um, sorry, number two, cutting planes are the planes along which a section is made. Number three, Cutting plane lines show the cutting planes in any of the photographic views. Okay, then we, we looked at the four different characteristics of section views. Okay, then all the various types of section view, the difference between revolving, remove sections. <laughs>